these two speed issues nearly broke me. I mean, I have been developing Shopify stores for more than 10 years and I had tens if not hundreds of customers who asked me to fix these two issues for them. And now looking back, I'm embarrassed to even let you know how much time it took me to learn how to do that. Looking back, I realized it was so straightforward, but still somehow it managed to burn my life away. And now because I want to celebrate the lost time and make sure that you don't have to go through that, I'm going to show you how you can fix these two annoying speed issues. You know the situation when you load up a website and you start reading and all of a sudden the page jumps on you and you don't know where you were? Or you try to click on a button but until you click the button moves and then you miss it? That's annoying and it's a bad user experience. When a website loads many files get downloaded to be displayed on the screen. Some of those files are harder to download and take more time than others but the browser displays them as they become available. So when you load up a website, you will first see the background color, then the text blocks and if you have an image in between the text blocks, you may have this experience. When the image gets loaded, the container holding it will expand to the full height of the image, pushing the text block at the bottom down. This is one of the main CLS generators and can be simply fixed by adding a width and a height parameter to the image tag. By doing that you are telling the browser to expect an element of that size and so it will reserve the space on the page for it for when it will be ready to be displayed. But there are other similar situations as well. You may use an app that displays a widget on the page. The page will load up all its assets and because apps tend to be slower, after a certain time the widget is displayed, pushing the rest of the content down. To have this one fixed you just have to reserve space on the page for that widget. You can do that using CSS rules and specifying the height and the width. By using custom fonts, you may introduce CLS to your page as well. Usually when adding a custom font, you will use a font display swap property on the add font face rule. This is meant to help with the site speed and when swapping the custom font, we are telling the browser to display the default browser font until the custom font gets downloaded. Now the default browser font and your custom font may vary in size. Your text will initially load with the default font that will have a certain line height and size and then when the swap with the custom font happens, the text will change size and shift the layout. In this case you will want to add CSS and style the default browser font to match as much as possible the custom font size. That way it will reserve the space on the screen for when the custom font will be ready to be displayed. CLS is not happening just during the initial loading of the site, so make sure that when you are scrolling down you don't have elements that shift around without the user performing any action. If the user clicks on a button and then the page changes, that is not considered as CLS. We just want to avoid unexpected movement on the page that happened without the user's input. The tricky part is that sometimes you won't see the CLS happen. If you are checking your website on a good Wi-Fi connection, things will happen fast and you won't get to see with your eyes the movement happening. To see this shift happening, you can inspect your page, then go to your network tab, disable cache and set the throttle speed to slow 3G or even to fast 3G. Doing that you will emulate a slow or fast 3G internet connection and you will get the chance to experience what some of your users will see and maybe observe those elements moving. You can also go to the performance tab and run a test there. You will get a loading profile and a timeline that might answer some questions and help you understand what is happening on the page. And that brings me to the second one. This one is responsible for most of my grey hair. Looking online for resources to help fix LCP can be time consuming. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of resources but the way LCP is explained doesn't make it very clear on how to address it. The simple explanation is that LCP represents the time needed for the browser to display the largest element on your viewport. So for example, if the largest element on the screen in your case is an image, the time to download that image will be reflected in the LCP score. The way to have LCP reduced significantly is to ensure that the images and assets displayed in your viewport are shown as fast as possible. That means that you should not lazy load images that are directly in view. 
Unfortunately, I saw time and time again hero banners and slideshows directly in view that were lazy loaded. Any image, including the logo, should not be lazy loaded. On the contrary, you should use a preload tag and let the browser know that those images are needed as fast as possible. Another LCP generator is using a preloading bar or a placeholder on the images that are directly in view. As in the case of the lazy loading, if you display a preloader instead of the image that you should show as fast as possible, you can create LCP. If the browser knows that there is an image there and it is directly in view, any delay in showing that image will result in LCP. Also avoid using any transition effects that might delay any of the elements from showing on the screen. Once you ensure that the elements in view are shown as fast as possible, you can add to the head of your document a list of preload tags and include images, fonts and any asset URLs of visible elements. You can set the fetch priority as high. That lets the browser know that those elements are important and have priority. Unfortunately, LCP and CLS for that matter can be introduced as as your website matures and grows. By adding new elements to the site or by being a bit careless sometimes as a developer, you can add to the problem. If you want to learn more about Shopify speed optimization, you can watch this video next.